Hey YouTube, it's Erin and I am the Handbag Housewife and I'm back again with another video. Today's video, I have a triple unboxing in store for you with a fair amount of strap action to boot. As you can see, I have Fendi, I have Louis Vuitton, and I have Coach for you. So we have all sorts of brands represented in today's video. I will tell you that the Louis Vuitton and Coach parts of the unboxing are relatively small in comparison to the Fendi unboxing. That's the big one, and I'm going to save it for last. So first, let's start with these two. These two items I purchased from Candy. She has her own YouTube channel. It's called Candy's Sweet Love for LV, and I boxed them up just to make them look pretty, and I figured I would share what I got with you. Let's start with Louis Vuitton. Why not? This is the box I actually received from Louis Vuitton with my counterfeit strap, or my sus strap, back from repairs. So I got this back from repairs. I have a current ongoing PayPal dispute regarding this strap. I have contacted the seller from Japan and they are more than happy to accept a return, but I have to wait until PayPal authorizes me to ship it back. And I did do a little bit of investigating once I got the strap back in my hands because a strap just like it, which had been authenticated, popped up in one of my Facebook groups. So I reached out to the individual who was selling it and she's actually an admin of this Louis Vuitton group. And so I asked her, can I use some photos from your strap to compare it to my strap? Because honestly, this strap, it looks like super good. In fact, Louis Vuitton wasn't even able to distinguish it as being counterfeit until they had it in their own hands. And I think the reason for that was because, you know, pictures can come out blurry and they didn't want to say for sure. I think I can tell now what the issue is, and I'm going to go ahead and show that to you. So I don't know, because I don't have my glasses on, if I have this upright or not, but the date code and then also the heat stamp where it says Louis Vuitton and where it's made. That is where I am seeing a difference. I did not take the time to examine this LV stamp here. Most of my straps have a different kind of hook than this. I think the capucines may have a similar hook to this one. And if so, I will go ahead and take some pictures and insert them while I'm talking now. But Basically, when I compare the stamping for the made in and also for the date code, the stamping is much more crisp on the photos from the strap that had been authenticated from the individual Facebook seller um, group admin that I spoke with. And her photos are a little blurry, but you can still tell how much crisper the stamp is than what I have here on this particular strap. As far as this little ball goes, the way that the Louis Vuitton stamping wraps around the edge, my eyes just aren't good enough that I could pick a difference there up. And everything else looks so, so good. I mean, the leather feels good. The canvas feels good. The canvas looks good up against my other canvases. So this is an amazing replica or dupe or, or fake, whatever you want to call it. But I am, I believe, going to get my money back for this. And I just have to be patient with PayPal until they tell me what to do. But what's in this box I know is not a fake, although it is also a strap. So Louis Vuitton sent me back the sus or fake strap boxed up beautifully in a box, and I didn't send it to them in a box. Then they also put it in a Louis Vuitton dust bag. So not only did they not charge me anything, for sending a counterfeit strap to them, but they sent it back packaged just absolutely beautifully in genuine packaging, which I think is pretty amazing. I mean, if I were them, I probably would have kept it and burned it, but they returned it to me, which I really appreciate. So what I got from Miss Candy is this Louis Vuitton strap, and this came from her Speedy 20. And the reason I wanted it is because I have a Speedy 20 and I wanted to have an all the Keta strap to match this bag. This bag came with a thick webbed strap, which is gorgeous. And I also have a monogram strap that came from a pochette Matisse that's just all monogram with no Vaquetta trim. But there's just something about a Vaquetta strap that looks amazing on monogram, even though you have to worry about it getting spotted and all that. 
So I will just clip this on real quick and show you the look that I was going for. And again, this is not a look that I'm going to wear all the time, but I can also use this strap with my favorite in the Damier Azure. So I love that. And I love that it's adjustable because the strap that comes with the favorite is not, and it's also thinner than this strap. So as you can see here, I think this hits in a really nice spot and it's sort of adjusted at the middle. And I love the look. It basically gives you the look that the Nano Speedy has, but you've got the little bit more manageable size of the Speedy 20. And some people aren't crazy about the bandolier straps. I absolutely love the one that came with this bag. And that is this strap. This strap also looks amazing with my capucines. But I wanted to be able to strap it up and do different things. And so Miss Candy allowed me to do that by parting with her beautiful Vicetta strap. The next part of the unboxing involves a coach item, and it is, once again, a strap. I promise you there's a bag in this video. It's coming up next. Not only is it a bag, but it is a vintage bag, and I think you guys should run and get some for yourself of this particular style of vintage bag because you can get them for a steal right now. The baguette prices have climbed for the vintage baguettes for Fendi, but this particular style you can get for like coach prices, the one I'm going to do next. And speaking of coach, this is the wonderful strap I got from Candy from Candy Sweet Love for LV. So this is a strap that came with the Canyon Coach Tally. And I actually had this bag in my possession and returned it because I felt like the bag was too orange, which is funny because I ended up loving the color papaya, which is also orange. I can link the video down below because in the video, I think I show both the papaya tally and I show the Canyon tally. It sort of felt like in that video that the Canyon tally was trying to be orange when it should be brown and that the <laughs> papaya tally was the orange I was looking for all along. And if you look here, this strap, even though it has the canyon trim, it has the papaya color in the chain detail. And I just think this would be fabulous paired with a shirt that was sort of this mauvey pink color. So it gives me more opportunity to wear this little camera bag that I just repurchased because I missed her so bad. And even though the trim leathers are different, I just think that that is really cute. This sweater from H&M is going to give me the effect that I was looking for where I've got the bit of the mauvey pink in the middle and it just gets pulled out by the sweater and makes the bag and the strap pop. The next strap I didn't include in the unboxing because I have it in an odor chamber <laughs> and I got that terminology from Winnie B LV. So I put this strap in the odor chamber. So this is a bonus unboxing. I'm not going to call it a quadruple unboxing because it's not in a box. It's in an odor chamber and it's got charcoal bags in it because when I got this strap, it smelled and I bought it. Well, it was gifted to me by a Etsy seller from Turkey and the smell is gone. He put it in this bag, which is a really nice, sweet little pouch and this was handcrafted by him. He has his own Etsy store and I went ahead and put a charcoal packet in with it. Oh, it still smells like smoke. Shoot. Okay. Well, regardless. So he sells a Pochette Matisse dupe strap and this is the Damier Azure version of it. I can link his shop, but again, this strap smells like smoke. He assures me that the smell will go away, but it smells like smoke. I don't know if it was on his hands when he was working on it or what, but I'll link it if you want it because it is very well made, but I'm not sure the odor chamber is going to take care of it. I need to heat up those charcoal packets. And since the pouch doesn't smell anymore, maybe if I just put the strap in there by itself, it will work. The color is not a perfect match with my Damier Azure favorite, but I think it looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and try it on for you because I do think that once it's separated from the bag a little bit, it's going to look a lot better. So I think that the strap has been in that odor chamber for a few days, but I didn't heat up the charcoal packets before I started. So that may be why it didn't get to the inside. So I have it set on the middle setting right now. It's way too long. You go ahead and shorten it. One thing I told him whenever I asked him 
about making this was to make it so where the buckle came down further on my chest like the pochette matisse strap and it doesn't and so i just don't know about this one guys i mean i appreciate him sending it to me it was kind of a crazy deal i bought it from him i paid for it and then he didn't ever ship it and i think he gave me a little bit of a discount because i told him i would show it on my channel and so I reported it to Etsy and they refunded me, but they let him keep his money and he never shipped it. He said he was going to ship it anyway, but he never shipped it. And then he contacted me over a month later and said that he wanted to ship it because he wanted me to do a video. And I said, okay. And so he said, will you do a video if I ship it? And I said, okay, I will if I like it. And I mean, I do like it but the color doesn't quite match it smells like smoke and this buckle it's hitting me right here on the collarbone so that's not super great i think what the problem is with the buckle hitting in the wrong spot is that maybe it's that this piece is too long i'm not sure gosh it smells that's not a very rain endorsement but he says the odor will go away. If you want to give it a shot, I will link his store down below. Let's just compare it to the Pochette Matisse strap and see if it is the same dimensions on the length of each strap, because that may be why it doesn't exactly hit me in the right spot. So this is the issue. The strap part that's shorter is way longer and that brings it up that much further. Otherwise it would be hitting me right here like I wanted. You just can't get much better than the real deal. But Louis Vuitton doesn't make a crossbody Damier Azur strap, so that is an option out there for you if you would be interested in it. Okay, so I just went ahead and blow dried, or blue dried, blow dried, the activated charcoal. I wrapped the strap around both of the packets, put them back in the bag because the inside of the bag is stinky, but it also sort of contains that smell and then I've got it in this plastic bag that I'm going to roll up and I'm going to stick it behind me and forget about it for a while and then I'll come back to it in a couple weeks and let you know if the smell is gone. Last but not least is the flashy fabulous Fendi unboxing. My own coined term for FF which is really meant to mean fun furs. A logo came up with by I believe Carl Lagerfeld. So here we go. I put her in the box that I got my peekaboo in that I showed you yesterday. I've had some fun getting this bag tip top shape for you. So it comes in a Fendi dust bag. I have had it authenticated because I want to make sure that it's the real deal before I show it to you. I used authenticate first for that authentication. It came back almost immediately. They are super fast. I don't think you really need to pay for the speedy authentication with them most of the time because they are so, so fast. But here is the gorgeous bag. This is called, I think, the Mia Chain Tote, but it's definitely from the Mia line, M-I-A. And I'm not sure what year this is from, but it is in a beautiful cognac sort of colored leather. And it has a FF plate. And when I got this, there was actually a fair amount of tarnishing and some light scratching on the front plate. And I took my polishing cloth, the Connoisseur's polishing cloth, and I used both the gold and the silver one on it. I really can't tell too much of a difference between the two, but I'm gonna put before and after pictures of the zipper pull and the FF plate in here as I'm talking. Just a tiny bit of work on it took off pretty much everything. I mean, there's a few tiny hairline scratches and anything else you're seeing is probably fingerprints. But this bag, I just love the chain detail on it. I think it's gorgeous how it's woven. And it looks a lot like how Louis Vuitton is doing their chains on their pochette accessoire and on their vanity. But Fendi did it before they did. <clears throat> And probably somebody did it before Fendi did. You can see this is kind of a squishy, gushy bag. It has two compartments on the inside. There's a pocket right here on this side, a zippered pocket in the middle. And this bag did come with some paperwork, but what is inside here are just the care cards. It's nothing fancy. I've got two cards here. 
and I don't have any sort of authenticity card, but again, I did get it authenticated. What I love about Authenticate First is they keep like a record of all the things I've had authenticated and I can go back at any time and get a certificate for this if I wanted because they have all the pictures saved and they keep track. And I've done authentications with other companies and they don't keep records like that. So if I ever wanted to sell a bag that I got authenticated through them, it wouldn't be as easy to go pay 10 bucks and get a certificate for whoever I sold it to. And you guys know I go through bags. Like I decide I like them, I decide I don't like them and I go back and forth. I found that I have two inserts that go amazingly in this bag and so that when I set it down, it won't do this. These I got from Joy and Bag and I thought that they would be good for something and then they weren't. They're a Marmont organizer of some sort, probably for the medium size and they just didn't fit anything I had. I used them in my Marc Jacobs the Tote Bag Minis for a little bit. And then I sold all of those except for one, and I've actually been using that one. I may regret selling the ones I sold. I'm so fickle. But what I wanted to show you is when I put those two inserts in, they fit extremely well, and now my squishy gushy bag is not too squishy anymore, and it stays upright all on its own. Now you can wear this bag under the shoulder, like so, but one thing I don't like about wearing it under the shoulder with short sleeves is that I get skin prints on my FF and then I feel like I need to polish it. I need to carry around a microfiber cloth so I can polish it just like I would my glasses. But I think it is just adorable. I don't have my camera up quite high enough. I think it is so cute and it's really actually comfortable like that. I wish that it dropped down maybe another inch, but it definitely works as a shoulder bag. Check out what I found. So this is the coach strap that they just brought back. It is available in some stores. It's got the ivory leather on it. And it is basically the same shade as this bag on the woven part. And I figured out that if I add two little rings on each side, I can clip a strap to it and still have enough room to get into the bag. If I don't add the two little rings, I can clip a strap to these little hooks right here, but then I don't have enough room to get into the bag. It just won't spread open enough. So you can see I have it hooked on those clips, but I can still get my hand in there, no problem. And now I have a crossbody Mia tote and it is extremely comfortable to wear this way and I think I like it a lot. Now I am considering a Fendi strap as well because there are some that have black trim and then the brown background with the darker brown FFs. And so that is something I'm considering. I think that could be really nice as well, but this strap does look really good with this bag. So you will have to let me know what you think. Should I spring for the Fendi strap or should I just use the coach strap? I do have a couple straps from see-through purses that also look really nice. I like how this comes in and tapers like that, but these are really fun colors and patterns and I like the woven detail. I think it looks very expensive and nice. The other reason I like adding these little O-rings to this bag is I feel like it keeps the hardware on the chain, the base of the chain from getting scratched because I'm not constantly clipping and unclipping straps. So here it is with the see-through purses strap. I like that look too. The only thing is I do like that taper effect on the one with the leather and the Fendi one would have that same sort of look. If you like the see-through purses straps I'm showing you, I will link their website down in the description box. If you use the code HBHW30, you can get 30% off your purchase, and that is a deal because her straps are very well made. I cannot guarantee you that the colors I'm showing you will still be available, but I can tell you that you will find something because she has gobs and gobs of choices. So here it is with more of a zebra type look, and I think that that is very cute too. I just love it. I love all the straps. What can I say? I mean, isn't that fun and fabulous and flashy and Fendi? Well, the strap's not Fendi. It's see-through purses, but you know what I'm saying. The very last thing I would like to do would be to compare the size of this bag to two of the bags in my collection. First, I have the Dark Honey Lulu Pepper Bag, and this is in the size small. These bags are almost identical in size. 
and in shape. Although, of course, the Lulu Puffer Bag has a double chain handle. And this one, while it does have a double chain handle, you can't pull it long to make it crossbody. You have to do the modification with the little loops in order to do the crossbody and be able to get into your bag easily. But I think both of these are fabulous choices. This one though cost me $520 plus tax, and this one cost me about $2,000, and now they're way over that. So which one do you like better? I mean, how does that figure into it? You gotta figure price into the equation, right? I have seen these Mia totes, and this is in the small size. I think it's about 11 and a half inches across at the base. But I've seen them on Poshmark, on eBay, I've seen them on the Real Real. You can find them for a decent price in a lot of places. You just have to watch out for the condition. But you can see here, this is compared to the Coach Pillow Madison. It is a little bigger, but not a lot. Depth-wise, it's similar at the top, but the bottom spreads out just a bit more. And then if you look at the base of the bag, you can see that the Mia is just a little bit longer. This bag holds everything you would ever want it to, and it's not a super heavy bag, even though the leather is luscious and delicious and fabulous. Fabulous Fendi, and I would recommend it. Just be aware that it does have a shorter drop, right about eight inches. I wish it was nine, but it is eight, and it still works, you saw. And then the base of the bag, just since I have my tape measure out, it is actually, if you measure it from piping to piping, it is 12 and a half inches. If you measure it to all the end of the squishy gushiness, it's a little bit longer. At the top here, it's about nine inches. And then if I measure the base at the ends where it's wider, it's about four inches from here to here, but then you see it gets narrower in the middle where the pleats pop out. So it's probably pretty consistent across because of the way the pleating is done. Those are very hodgepodge, loosey-goosey kind of measurements. I would definitely go off people's website measurements over mine, but it is a really nice size and I thought it would be too big, but it really isn't. And so I hope that this is something you guys find helpful. And if you like this bag, snatch it up. I do think these are gonna come back in style. And if you like this video, please give me a big thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, what are you waiting for? Do it and ring the notification bell so that you are notified of future exciting content such as this. Also, go find me on Instagram. The name there is the same. It's the at symbol, then the handbag housewife, all lowercase. You can DM me there or you can email me at thehandbaghousewife at gmail.com. If I don't hear from you, I will see you again real soon. Take care and have a fabulous day. Bye.